Loki's alive. Can you believe it? He's up, he's up there. What did he say? Threw it in. Oh, we're in. Nobody thought you were dead. That is one of my favorite Apple TV tips from last year's video. Really easy to use. You just say, what did he say, she say, or they say. The Apple TV will hop back 15 seconds, turn on the subtitles, play that 15 seconds, and then turn them off. Now in this year's video, I'm gonna share with you 10 more Apple TV tips. Make sure to stay at the end. Tip number 10 is a great tip that involves AirPods. Now if you wanna learn more about the current Apple TV lineup, I'll put links in the description along with that last year's uh, 10 tips video so you can learn even more. Number one is creating users. Now this is a repeat from last year's list, but I do think it's an important one to get the best Apple TV experience. Uh, one of the best things, I have my Apple TV right here, one of the best things about using an Apple TV to me is the up next section. And the up next section keeps your shows organized across your apps. I have Disney Plus, Hulu, 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 because well, that, some of them are Paramount Plus and Prime Video. It is great for keeping your shows organized. But if you have a whole family adding shows on here, it just keeps bumping the list down as you watch new things. Now you create users and everybody has their list of shows. To set it up, you would go into your settings, go to users and accounts. Then you would go down to add new user and you could choose to do it with an iPhone by bringing an iPhone near the Apple TV, which is really cool. You bring it right next to the Apple TV and then it'll just sign you right in. Or you can choose to sign in manually. You would enter your Apple ID, your password, and then anything you watch on the Apple TV will sync across your other devices. Number two is controlling your Apple TV from your phone or an iPad. Depending on which device you're using to access a control center, you're gonna swipe up from the bottom or like this iPhone from the upper right hand corner. And then you should see an icon that looks like a remote. You pick which Apple TV you wanna control, such as my bedroom Apple TV or the one here in the office. You can also control your Apple TV from your watch. You open up the remote app, and then from there, you got your Apple TVs you can select. Here's the Office Apple TV. And then I have my navigation, so I can navigate around and then select. Number three is playing sound from other devices using the Apple TV and HomePods. In the past, you would hook up one of these, pair some HomePods to it, and you could only listen to sound coming from the Apple TV. But with the newest version, you have to have the newest version, it supports ARC, and that is Audio Return Channel. The way that works is on TVs, you typically find an ARC or an eARC HDMI port. What you would do is you would plug the Apple TV into that port. Anything plugged into the other HDMIs will pass sound to the Apple TV, which means you could hook up Blu-ray players, consoles, and other devices and utilize your HomePods for sound. This is really easy to set up. To initially pair a set of HomePods together, you would go into your video and audio settings, scroll down to audio output. Here you're gonna see I have an office pair of HomePod minis and one full size a HomePod. Right now we're paired with the office HomePod minis. To turn on the audio return channel, you go here, select it, and turn it on, it's gonna do a test. Then once it's connected, you could then play audio from your other sources. Number four is up next tips. The up next section is great. It's nice to be able to keep track of all your shows. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with some services such as YouTube TV and Netflix. Now the tip in the up next section, you can go to a show or a movie do a long press and that's gonna bring some additional options such as view details, which that's gonna take you and show you all the different episodes and seasons that are available of the show. You also have remove from up next. If you've already watched an episode, maybe on a different service or you don't wanna watch that one, you can mark it as watched or you can just remove something from the re recently watched and not have it in the up next section. Now another tip in the up next section is maybe you don't wanna see the up next when you you push the little home button on there. Instead, maybe you want it to go just to your apps right away. You could go into settings, remotes and devices, the TV button and change it to home screen. Now you press the little TV button and it's gonna take you right to your apps. If you wanna see the up next section after changing this, you would click on the little TV app and it's gonna launch in there. Number five is Apple TV subscriptions. And I'm not talking about Apple TV Plus. I'm talking about third party subscriptions that you can get 
through Apple TV. If you go under the TV app and the watch now section and scroll down, you will find my channels. And under my channels are the channels that I subscribe to. And then there are the more channels such as stars, AMC, Epix. I subscribe to Paramount Plus. It is $9.99. If you go to their website, it is $9.99 for the commercial free version, same thing. But getting it through Apple TV, I get Showtime included. If you go to Showtime's website, it's $10.99 to get a subscription. Also, they have things like AMC. You could pay $8.99 a month. Binge watch the shows, like for example, I need to turn on AMC and catch up with Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. Once I finish those two shows, I'll turn it off. Now, number six tip is subscribe to services on the Apple TV. For example, Disney Plus, Netflix, HBO, a YouTube Premium, any of those things, if you subscribe through the Apple TV, it is so much easier to cancel your subscriptions. Plus, they just sync across everything. You could go on to your phone, iPad, or computer, and go into your subscriptions and turn them off. Or you could go into the Apple TV, hit users and accounts, go to the user, go to subscriptions. Once you sign into your iCloud account, you could see all your active services. So let's just say Disney Plus, and I can change to an annual plan, or I could just cancel it right there. Here's some of the services I canceled before. Here's AMC Plus. To start it back up, I just click on it. Much easier than having to visit uh, the network site and having to go through their cancellation stuff. Number seven is smart home control. The Apple TV is a HomeKit hub. What that means is if you get compatible smart devices that work with Apple's HomeKit, you can pair them up with the Apple TV and start uh, building a smart home out. What's great is you can control your devices right from the Apple TV. If you hold down the little TV button, it will bring up the sidebar. On that sidebar, there's a little home icon. And that home icon is going to show you the items in your home that's under the favorite section. Right now I have all my cameras in the favorite section and these are my favorite scenes. If you want to uh, pick what goes in these sections, you would go into uh, your phone, your iPad or on your computer. Then you would launch the home app. Under the home section, there's all of your favorites. So if you want to add or remove something from your favorites, you would do a long press on it, go to the settings, and then toggle the switch to remove it or add it to your favorites. So if it's not in your favorites, go into the room, find the accessory, hit the little gear, and then flip the include in favorites section. Let's say I select my living room camera. I can bring it up. I can look at all my cameras at the same time with that icon. A great addition is if you click this little icon, it's gonna show you all the lights that are in the room and you can control them. It's great, maybe you have a camera in the backyard, you wanna flip on the light to see what set off the motion. Number eight is using TV shortcuts. With Apple's Shortcuts app, you can write all kinds of automations that involve your Apple TV. Uh, one of the ones I like is a multiple choice shortcut that uh, ask you what you want to watch. Here it is in use. Hey Siri, watch TV. Okay, Craig, which one? Hulu, Netflix. Or Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Done, Craig. And it opened up the remote app. It turned on the lighting and launched right into where I want to be. If you look at the shortcut, the first thing it's doing is it's turning on my family room Apple TV. It's switching it to me. And then it's going through this menu. And you have Hulu, Netflix, and Disney Plus. When you do a menu, it uh, breaks them up into other steps and then you put things that happen within those steps. So when I go to Hulu, it opens up the app on the family room TV and then it uh, launches the living room lighting, which is just white light. 
But if we go to Netflix, it opens the Netflix app on the Family Room Apple TV, but then it sets the movie lighting to red. At the end of that menu, it turns the app on in the iPhone to control the Apple TV in the Family Room. If you don't know where the remote is, you use your voice to turn on your TV, and then the app is right there ready for you to use. I'll put a link in the description so you can download these shortcuts if you want, and then you can make some changes to them as you see fit. Number nine is a gaming tip. You can play a lot of iOS and iPad OS games on your Apple TV, and there's a bunch of them that support controllers. What you would do is you would launch the App Store, go over to Games, and you have the different games you can pay for. There is also the top free games. One of the games that I've owned for a long time and have had a blast playing is Asphalt 8. With Asphalt 8, I can take advantage of using a controller. If you want to pair a controller up to your Apple TV, you can use an Xbox or PlayStation controller. I did talk about that more in last year's tip video, so make sure to check that out in the description or stay to the end. It'll be there. If you look at this as I'm playing, it's a console-like game. It feels like I'm playing on a console with a controller, and it didn't cost me any more money since I already own the game for my iPhone. Number 10 is spatial audio support. Last fall, Apple added spatial audio support to the Apple TV 4Ks. If you're not familiar with spatial audio, I do have a video I'll put in the description that goes into a lot more depth on it. Basically, it is a virtual surround sound that locks the voices to the screen and um, uses head tracking between your supported AirPods and the Apple TV. That head tracking, it can determine where you are within the space. And with that, it will make a virtual surround sound that is really impressive. What is cool too, is if you are wearing a set of AirPods and using this, if you turn your head, the sound will sound like it's still coming from the TV. If you walk out of the room, you will hear the sound getting left behind as you get further away. Spatial audio works with AirPods third generation, AirPods Pro, and the AirPods Max. Now, if you wanna try out spatial audio, put in the supported AirPods, and then when you do, go into the settings on your phone, go to Bluetooth, find those AirPods, click the I next to it, and then you'll see your different options. One of them is spatial audio. Take a look at that. I started using my AirPods Pro and watching a lot more TV with them because there was just so much more detail. The sound was fuller. If it was an action movie, it sounded like things were all around. Uh, really was great. So good that I ultimately got the AirPods Max and this is like a home theater on your head. Now they're easy to use. Let's say you grab a set of AirPods, you put them in your ears, you're ready to go. What you're gonna see is this icon pops or this little alert saying Craig's AirPods Max are nearby. And then you click the little TV button and audio is gonna transfer right to the AirPods. When I'm done, I just take them off. Now sound's coming back out of the TV. Now do you have any Apple TV tips you'd like to share? Let us know in the comment section. Next, make sure to check out the Apple tip video I did last year. There are some great tips in there that I didn't cover in this one and you don't want to miss those. Thanks for watching. Bye.